Hello everyone, uh, welcome to free crash course on competitive exams held by Virat Hindustan Sangam in association with Manifest IAS. This program is inspired by Dr. Subramaniam Swami and is convened by Sri Ravi Shankar sir who is a state education convener for VHS Karnataka and also president of Good Neighbors India NGO. So I am the chief mentor of your program Dhanush Kumar. And you can watch this program online on the YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam and also on the YouTube channel of Udya News Karnataka. For any further queries, doubts, guidance, mentorship, anything you want regarding to any competitive exam, you can join our Telegram channel VHS Education Forum. Just type VHS Space Education Space Forum on the Telegram channel and you will be able to join, join us. So we are negotiating the economic part of the syllabus. It's bit in detail because economy is full of concepts. So it will take some more classes. That's okay. But we want to do justice to what we are teaching, right? Okay. So it is useful as I have been saying, it is useful for both freshers and veterans, senior aspirants. Both of them can make you good use of this program. Okay. So the source for your Indian economy is Indian economy by Sriram Sridangam if you are studying in English. Okay, we are dealing with the chapter of taxation. Taxation, right? So every, I said, every nation, every government worth its name as a or need taxation because they have to spend on social schemes, infrastructure, military spending, in order to run the administration, so many things. So, every government needs taxation. So, uh, we have discussed the basic concepts, indirect tax, direct tax, all those things in the previous class. Today, we will discuss the tax amnesty schemes. Uh, I told you, the tax to GDP ratio in India is just 11%. Tax to GDP ratio is just 11%. And also, if uh, there are 6.3 crore tax filers, there are just 1.3 crore people who pay the taxes. So, there is lot of black money. Black money, which means for which there is no tax, no tax has been paid for that money. So, in order to streamline the black money, in order to bring the black money into the mainstream, mainstream economy, tax amnesty schemes has been devised. So it is the meaning of tax amnesty scheme is suppose you have not paid any tax, you have not paid any tax, you can legalize your earnings, you can legalize your earnings by paying a fine or interest along with the required tax. You have to pay the fine, interest and required tax to the government and thereby you will be able to legalize your income. So amnesty means it is just like mafi. Government is going to give you mafi, but you have to pay your taxes along with some fine and interest. So there are many schemes with respect to tax uh, uh, tax uh, amnesty. So, so the first scheme, so during the demonetization, so the one of the main purpose of the demonetization is to weed out black money from the economy. There was a lot of black money to remove the black money from the economy, demonetization was done. So one of the goals. So uh, after that, after that, the government came in with a scheme called income declaration scheme. Income declaration scheme. Suppose you have a unauthorized income for which you have not paid taxes, for which you cannot show any account. So you can legalize that income by under this, by paying a fine. Income declaration scheme 2016 bought in after the demonetization. Along with that, uh, at the same time, uh, along with income declaration scheme, government also bought in Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana 2016. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana 2016. So, PMGKY. So, under this, you have to deposit some money in the social welfare schemes or social welfare fund for which you are not going to get any interest. You have to deposit your illegal money or some a certain percentage of your ill-gotten money into a fund for which no interest will be paid and it will be returned to you after four years. So this is the concept of 
प्रधान मंत्री गरीब कल्याण योजना सो यू हैव टू पे योर टैक्सेस फर्स्ट यू हैव टू पे योर टैक्सेस अलॉन्ग विद दैट इंटरेस्ट इंटरेस्ट अक्रूड ऑन द टैक्स सपोज यू हैव टू पे हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑफ टैक्स सो दे वुड लेवी सम एटीन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट पर इयर सो इफ यू डिनाइड द इफ यू आर नॉट पेड द टैक्सेस फॉर वन इयर द अमाउंट विल कम अप टू हंड्रेड एंड एटीन रुपीज प्लस ए फाइन यू हैव टू फिल ए फाइन इन ऑर्डर टू लीगलाइज यूर इनकम राइट सो दिस इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पीएमजी के वाई नेक्स्ट अनदर स्कीम इज सबका विश्वास लेगेसी डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम सबका विश्वास लेगेसी डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम दिस स्कीम इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस इट इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो वॉट इज इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू सो बिफोर कमिंग ऑफ जीएसटी देर यूज टू बी वैट इज टू बी देर एक्साइज ड्यू टू बी यूज टू देर एक्साइज ड्यूटी लेवीड ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कस्टम्स ड्यूटी लेवीड ऑन इम्पोर्ट्स एंड ऑल्सो सेल्स टैक्स एट द सेल्स टैक्स और वैट एट द स्टेट लेवल सो दीज यूज टू बी सो लॉट ऑफ दीज टैक्स डिस्प्यूट यूज टू गेट स्टक् इन द कोर्ट प्रोसीडिंग सो द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट और द इंडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस डिपार्टमेंट यूज टू सेंड नोटिसेस टू द टैक्स पेयर्स दैट यू हैव नॉट पे द टैक्सेस सो दे हैव टू रेस्पॉन्ड विथ इन सर्टन टाइम बट वॉट सर्टन पीपल वॉट दे यूज टू डू विथ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ फाइन दे यूज टू फाइल ए केस इन द कोर्ट दे यूज टू फाइल केसेस इन द कोर्ट सो दो केसेस देर वॉज लॉट ऑफ केसेस लॉट ऑफ डिस्प्यूट बिटवीन द टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट एंड द पब्लिक सो इन ऑर्डर टू रिजोल्व दिस डिस्प्यूट इन ऑर्डर टू रिजोल्व दिस डिस्प्यूट दिस स्कीम वॉज वॉट इन सबका विश्वास लेगेसी डिस्प्यूट रेगुलर रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम 2019 थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो इट गिव सर्टन बेनिफिट और प्रिविलेजेस वॉट प्रिविलेजेस वन इज इफ यू पे द टैक्सेस इफ यू पे द टैक्सेस यू नीड नॉट पे एनी फाइन वी कैन रिजोल्व द डिस्प्यूट आउट साइड द कोर्ट आउट साइड द कोर्ट वी विल रिजोल्व द डिस्प्यूट एंड यू नीड नॉट पे एनी टैक्सेस यू नीड नॉट पे एनी टैक्सेस राइट so that is the concept so it it deals with legacy taxes legacy taxes means old taxes old disputes before the gst those were called legacy taxes i told you excise duty customs duty all those things and it gives amnesty amnesty so the, there are two principles under this sabka vishwas legacy dispute resolution the first principle is amnesty amnesty means maafi and second uh, this thing is dispute resolution once you settle the dispute outside the court the resolved dispute is resolved you need not go back to court so these are the two principles under this scheme and if you settle the dispute under this scheme there is one benefit see earlier if you have evaded the taxes you are prone to or you are bound to go to jail right under criminal cases tax evasion is a criminal case right so it is a civil case but if you civil case if you use the ta uh, tax evasion for money laundering terrorism then it gets converted to criminal case so generally it is a civil case so you, you and even under civil case you can go to jail so but under this scheme there will be no prosecution no prosecution but there is one negative of this scheme there is one negative about this scheme what is the negative andre there is a moral hazard what is moral hazard it means see for non tax payers non tax payers we are giving them provision that you pay the taxes and legalize your income but this will demoralize or this will make the people genuine tax payers who are regularly paying the taxes for them they will lose the confidence they will lose the confidence they will think that even if we don't pay taxes it is okay government will bring in some scheme and we can regularize the income so it will demoralize the genuine tax payers so it is actually against the genuine tax payers genuine tax payers will actually lose the confidence in the system right so this is all about the legacy dispute resolution so apart from this there is one more thing vivad se vishwas scheme vivad se vishwas scheme it is related to direct taxes direct taxes relation is vivad se vishwas scheme under this scheme uh, if there is any direct tax dispute corporate tax wealth tax income tax any dispute with the government under this scheme and that is vivad se vishwas scheme you can regularize the income there is some provision right so next 
ऑपरेशन क्लीन मनी वन एंड टू वॉट इज दिस ऑपरेशन क्लीन मनी वन एंड टू सी ड्यूरिंग द डीमोनिटाइजेशन ड्यूरिंग डीमोनिटाइजेशन देर वॉज लॉट ऑफ कैश डिपोजिट लॉट ऑफ कैश डिपोजिट सी दिस गवर्नमेंट एड ए प्रॉपर प्लान दे वॉन्टेड टू वीड आउट द इलीगल मनी सो वॉट दे डिड uh when they did this demonetization lot of illegal money was also deposited so slowly what uh, until then the it department was sleeping so it uh, immediately got into action it started sending notices to people so if you have to deposit a money above so let there was a uh, threshold if you deposit some above 4000 or 5000 you have to give your pan card or something like that so it started sending notices to people saying that how did you get this money how did you get this money so uh, with this operation clean money 1 and 2 is exclusively related to illegal cash deposits so phase 1 is operation clean money 1 phase 2 is operation clean money 2 there are two phases right okay this is if you know this much about operation clean money then it is more than sufficient so next concept comes that direct tax code this is very very important there is lot of demand for direct tax code lot of demand for direct tax code why see we bought in gst for indirect taxes but direct taxes there are so many provisions so many laws so many rules so there is actually a confusion confusion regarding direct taxes right who is going to pay the taxes to whom the taxes are paid how is it distributed among the state and center so many things so if there is a dispute how it will be resolved so just like gst if we if we can bring in a proper law for direct taxes there is a provision there is a demand that demand is this direct tax code so it tries to replace see income tax actually is paid under there is a income tax act 1961 Income Tax Act 1961. IT Act is not Information Technology Act. Income Tax Act 1961. So, if you are paying income tax to government under this provision only, government will collect taxes. IT Act 1961. So, this direct tax uh, direct tax code is proposed to replace the IT Act. It is proposed to replace the IT Act. Okay, and also to simplify to simplify the payment of taxes see earlier if you are paying uh, the income taxes there used to be a bundle of or a large booklet of uh, documentation you have to fill each and every line it used to be very very hectic so now government has uh, simplified it simplified it there is a only one page you have to fill and you can file your taxes right so it also aims to direct tax codes also aims to simplify the tax filing procedure so along with that uh, along with that direct tax only when it comes to direct tax there are lot of reforms lot of reforms along with direct tax code what are the reforms one is wealth tax so earlier there used to be wealth tax now wealth tax is abolished there is no wealth tax if your income is more than 1 crore you have to pay a surcharge surcharge is there there is no wealth tax now so that is abolished then corporation tax corporation tax in 2019 it was reduced from 30% to 25% now corporation tax see suppose i was talking to my one of my friend in us so there the ta corporation tax is 35% so it is one of the highest corporation taxes that is why all this uh, apple google all these companies their headquarters is in ireland because ireland so because if the headquarters is in usa they have to pay a lot of taxes 35% is huge money it is almost more than one third of the income right and also income tax is 40% there income tax is 40% in california in the state of california the income tax is 40% if you earn 100 rupees 40 rupees goes to government right so uh, in india how much is the income tax the highest slab is 30% so it starts from 10% from 10% it goes up to 15 20 25 30 right so that is the highest so okay next corporation tax is reduced to 25% yes 
and along with that there is a general anti avoidance rule anti avoidance see this corporation tax even if even though we have lessened it to 25 percent there are there are countries uh, tax havens tax havens andre it is a heaven for tax there is no tax so there are countries where uh, this uh, uh, see uh, suppose british britain wants to british people or british citizen or british company wants to invest in india so they don't invest directly what they do they go to mauritius which is a tax haven and from mari <coughs> sorry and from mauritius they are going to direct the tax towards india so what happens in this criteria they are trying to avoid the tax because mauritius is a non no tax haven no tax haven or very less tax so if that kind of a plan is there then that is called general anti avoidance rules so to the companies try to avoid paying taxes so what the government does government bought in gar under g20 gar we will discuss what is gar in uh, in the in upcoming uh, times okay next is dta double taxation avoidance agreement we will discuss that also it just means see suppose a company is domiciled in india and it was also functioning in singapore right so they have to pay taxes they have to pay taxes both in singapore same product same manufacturing same product they are paying taxes both in singapore and india so to avoid that this agreement we have signed this agreement more than with more than 80 countries so this agreement double taxation avoidance agreement is bought in we will discuss what it is in some time next pom pace of effective management so this criteria is, it says that see there are multinational companies mncs what is a mnc which has presence over various countries infosys is a mnc though it is india born it has presence over multiple countries right okay so uh, place of effective management i told you double taxation avoidance let us say there is some company which is uh, uh, domiciled or which is functioning in panama and india panama is a tax haven panama where is it central america right panama isthmus gulf of panama yes so panama canal you would have heard it it is important from your geography perspective panama canal all that region greater antilles lesser antilles all that region gulf of mexico very important from your geography perspective right so let us say there is a company in panama there is a company in india same company is functioning at two places so there they have started the company just to avail the tax benefits because panama is a tax haven but majority function is being carried out in india because technology availability human resource availability because of all these reasons majority functions is taking place in india so under this provision place of effective management where is the exact functioning of the company taking place where the function is taking place there only the tax will be paid so this is the concept of place of effective management next with respect to direct tax code the committee name is important it is akilesh ranjan committee akilesh ranjan committee yes so it submits its report in 2019 and it aims to reform the 1961 income tax act akilesh ranjan committee not akilesh yadav akilesh ranjan committee is an economist so 1961 act na reform madadakke this committee is formed right okay next we have the capital gains tax what is the concept of capital gains tax capital means what bandavala you put the capital in something you gain the profit upon that profit if a tax is imposed that is capital gains tax right so you invest your money in land and after some years let's say 10 years the money doubles your capital has doubled so you have gained 100% hike on that 100% hike what is the tax that is going to be imposed that is capital gains tax so there are two types of capital gains tax two types one is 
long term capital gain tax and another one is short term capital gain tax ltcg stcg right so long term capital c which is higher is the long term capital gas uh, tax is higher or the short term short term is higher why capital gains tax see this stock market you are investing you are investing your capital short term if they invest what happens they put the money they uh, make profit and immediately leave the country foreigners if suppose foreigners invest the money they put the money in the stock market they take the profit and they leave the country so it is short term so he gida again it will lead to speculative investment speculative investment speculation is actually discouraged in capital market speculation and guesses based on guessing or speculation market even build the market avag build the us ukraine alli war aitu there is a speculation that stock market crashes so speculation is actually very bad because it is not one one person who is speculating lot of persons will speculate together ukraine crisis suddenly bsc nsc fell sensex and nifty 50 fell it is based on speculation see actually there is no issue as such ukraine war it does it impact india it will take some time but people's mentality that it is going to fall they fear and they fear together that is called speculation speculative investment is actually made in the short term short term so it is actually bad that is why short term capital gains is more to discourage speculative investment right long term capital gains the tax is less because that is good money ivag band ivag hogala it will stay for some time in india yes okay see this long term capital ta uh, gains tax actually uh, was abolished on uh, shares share market ali ltcg was abolished earlier but now it has been reintroduced on equity equity and shares i have told you what is the concept of equity and shares it has been reintroduced on these things next cost inflation index so before uh, knowing this uh, uh, cost inflation so capital gains tax capital see i told you you buy a property and it gets doubled in 10 years is the actual price of the property increases or is it because of inflation actually inflation in the no raise agirutte and also due to actual raise but the tax is levied only on the actual raise not on inflation raise hope you are getting the difference actual raise of the property and inflation raise so inflation raise mele there is no taxation so there is cost inflation index and there will be one index what they do is they are going to deduct from the gains your property is become 100 to 200 rupees but the actual gain is 70 rupees and 30 percent is inflation 30 rupees so only on that 70 rupees the capital gains tax will be levied not on the rest 30 rupees so inflation is deducted from the gains this is the concept of capital gains tax right okay so now we will talk about inverted duty structure inverted duty structure what is inverted duty structure see this concept is related to import and export import and export see generally i have told you that uh, exports should be encouraged because exports bring in foreign exchange exports should be encouraged and imports as far as possible should be discouraged apart from essential imports other crude oil pharmaceutical medicines all those things apis active pharmaceutical ingredients i will discuss that when it comes to ipr so uh, lower taxes on uh, see in order to increase the exports increase the exports the tax has to be low if we reduce the tax exports will increase export tax na reduce matter export increase agutte right and to to stop the imports we have to increase the import tax import na now nilsa dikke we have to increase the import tax right so atara that is normal that is a normal duty structure duty and a tax structure but inverted duty lena agutte lower tax on raw import 
इंपोर्ट मेले रो लो टैक्स आती एक्सपोर्ट मेले वि आर् गोयिंग टू पुट हई टैक्स आवेन इंपोर्ट विल एंक्रेज अंड एक्सपोर्ट डिस्करेज आगते इट्स ए बैड प्राक्टिस सो वै दिस हापनिंग अंदर यू यू कैन टेक् दसापल आफ रबर गुड्स रबर सो वि आर् वि आर् इंपोर्टिंग रबर फ्रम आल दी सौथ एस्टियन कंट्री सौथ एशियन मलेशिया मैनमार आल दी इंडोनेशिया आल दी कंट्री सो इफ वि आर् इंपोर्टिंग द रबर फ्रम दे रबर रा मेटीरियल मेले लो टैक्स लो इत बट रबर दु फिनी प्रॉडक्ट बरतल रबर इन दर आर् सो मेनी प्रॉडक्ट दट आर् मेड सो दट फिनी प्रॉडक्ट मेले टैक्स इज हई सो रबर फिनी प्रॉडक्ट इज नाट गेटिंग एक्सपोर्टेड वेर एस रा मेटीरियल इज गेटिंग इंपोर्टेड सो दिस इज ऐक्चुअली बैड टैक्सेशन पॉलिसी सो दिस इज कॉल्ड इनवर्टेड ड्यूटी स्ट्रक्चर ऐक्चुअली एक्सपोर्ट मेले टैक्स शुड बी लेस एंड इंपोर्ट मेले टैक्स शुड बी मोर इफ दैट गेट्स रिवर्स्ड देन इट इज कॉल्ड इनवर्टेड ड्यूटी स्ट्रक्चर वै दिस हेपन्स वन ऑफ द रीजन इज एफ टी ए फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंटली वि कैनाट इंपोज एनी रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द और वी कैनाट इंपोज टारीफ ऑन द इंपोर्ट सपोज वी हेव फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट विथ एशियान सो एशियन कैन पंप इन ऑल द गुड्स इन टू इंडिया वी वी हेव नो रईट टू इंपोज एनी टैक्सेस दट ईज द रीजन ऑफ दिस इनवर्टेड ड्यूटी स्ट्रक्चर राइट ओके फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट इज वन रीजन नेक्स्ट टैक्स एक्सपेडिचर वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ टैक्स एक्सपेडिचर सी गवर्मेंट गिव लॉट ऑफ सबसीडी ऑन वेरियस थिंग्स government gives lot of subsidy on various things so in order to promote growth in order to promote industry in order to promote regional balance so today lot of the companies are concentrated in around bengaluru hyderabad noida mumbai kolkata these cities so in order to distribute the industries properly especially industry should be there in ubli also it should be there in mangalore also mysore also it should be there in tier 2 and tier 3 cities regional stability regional regionally proper distribution ge we are giving tax concessions you set up a it industry in ubli you will get this much tax concession hmm? and in order to boost employment you set up this much industry you provide this much employment we will give you this much tax concession startup policy we are giving tax concession 3 years there is no tax for startups no capital gains tax get for 3 years for startup according to startup policy 2016 so the government is giving lot of concessions this concessions is called tax expenditure tax expenditure is not the expenditure done out of the taxes tax na collect madbekarane there is some concessions given to public industry that is the concept of tax expenditure the expressions exemptions and concessions so this is actually what revenue foregone right if we don't collect the taxes by giving the exemptions the revenue it is a revenue loss for the government so government every year is losing 6 lakhs crore 6 lakh crore to tax exemptions tax exemptions ke it is losing up to 6 lakh crore why tax expenditure is required i have told you already to promote balanced growth growth has to be balanced in the region that is that i have told you and also uh, tax expenditure alli what happens it distorts the resource allocation see resources will go to those industry or those sector or those regions or to those people who have tax concession right so it will distort the resource allocation what tax expenditure so that is on the negative side on the positive side if it goes to the tax exempted people they will produce more it is helpful for the economy so tax expenditure can be seen in both negative and positive way right okay next we will uh, discuss the concept of tax havens switzerland was a tax haven ireland is a tax haven mauritius yes 
Singapore, Panama, all these are tax havens. There is no tax or very minimal tax. That is why companies try to go there. So, A, no, there is no tax. First is there is no tax or very less tax in these places. And there is no tax information also. If India goes and asks uh, that uh, which Indian is has invested in your ma market or your economy, they are not going to give the information. There is no tax information, right? Along with that, they, the, in the tax havens, there is no presence. There is no presence. Andre, see, there, there are companies in the Mauritius. Mauritius, there are companies, lot of companies. But does it mean there is any activity that is taking place there? No. No economic activity is taking place there. Just shell companies. I am going to discuss what is the concept of shell company. There is no any presence. Companies are, do, do not have any presence in these tax havens. They just are going to utilize these tax havens for the purpose of evading taxes. Right? So this is the concept. Next, you have tax paradise. Tax heaven and ruin there. Tax paradise and ruin there. It is a heaven. Heaven paradise. So, Panama and Paradise Papers. So, what is this Panama and Paradise Papers? There, whoever had evaded the taxes, whoever had deposited their ill-gotten money, illegal money in the tax havens, our information got leaked. There was information that even Amitabh Bachchan's money was, illegal money was there, but that was not proved later on. So, this made a lot of noise for you years back. Panama and Paradise Papers. So, illegal money are a deposit money there, our information it is going to divulge. Right? So, this is the concept of Panama and Paradise Papers. So, it is regarding tax evasion and illegal money. Next, the concept of base erosion and profit shifting. Base erosion and profit. See, the name, the word or the statement itself is self-explanatory. What is base erosion and profit shifting? See, base means tax base. Tax base. Suppose Infosys, Infosys is headquartered in India, right? So let's say the tax base of Infosys is India. So in order to evade the taxes, in order to evade the taxes, this, so let's say Infosys is evading taxes, take the example, though, though they don't do it, they will shift the base. Tax base na India in the some other country they are going to shift. Tax base is shifted from India to some other country. So that is base erosion. Base is getting eroded. Tax base is getting eroded. From the domestic or indigenous country and the profit is shifting. Profit is shifting from domestic arena to international arena or some other country. This profit that is shifted to some other country. So this is the concept of base erosion and profit shifting. So BEPS. Did you understand the concept BEPS? From India it is shifted to something else. Base is eroded. Profit is shifted. Shift the base, right? And also, this is called as tax planning. There are three things. Tax avoidance, tax planning, and also tax evasion. Three things are there. Tax planning is actually good. You plan the taxes. See, you have, you are paying life insurance and medical insurance. For that, actually, there is no tax. If you have paid the taxes or there is minimal tax. Right? If you have paid the taxes for that, so you can get rebate in your income tax. You can get rebate in your income tax by showing that you have paid so much insurance. Right? So, that is actually tax planning. You plan to reduce your tax expenditure or your tax liability in a reduced model. That is the tax planning and it is legal. It is legal. Whereas tax avoidance, 
and tax evasion are illegal. Three concepts, only three concepts. Tax planning, tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance, avoiding to pay tax. Tax evasion, evade, evade from paying taxes through illegal means. So those two are illegal. Next, the concept of shell company. Shell company. So the shell companies, Andre, these companies do not have any functioning. Hmm? It is just a shell. See, you buy a coconut. You take out the inside uh, that uh, uh, co 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 coconut inside that this thing will be there. No? You take it out. So only the shell will be remaining. Right? Only the shell will be remaining. So without that inside material, inside fruit, is the shell any use? Of any use? No. So similarly, shell company inside there will be nothing. There will be just the shell. To outsiders, it looks like a company, but inside nothing. So these are fake companies. Fake companies created to evade taxes. To evade taxes. So Mauritius is known to have these shell companies. Next, you have the concept of black money. I have discussed. This BEPS encourages black money. So when you don't pay the taxes legally, it is actually black money. BEPSLE, there is a black money. And also it leads to moral hazard. Moral hazard means, see, some companies are actually honest. They are in India. They are not doing BEPS. They are properly paying the taxes in India. But some illegal companies are doing BPS and getting lot of profit. So it is a hindrance for genuine taxpayers. Just like tax amnesty schemes, which creates a moral hazard, BPS also creates moral, moral hazard for genuine taxpayers. Genuine taxpayers, okay, it is going to create a moral hazard. So it, it might, they might feel that even though being honest, honesty is not rewarded. Right? So this is the concept of moral hazard. So how to curb this BEPS? BEPS now how do we stop? One is there is a OECD BEPS framework. Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It is a majorly a European body but other developed countries. So it is a organization of developed countries. You the BEPS framework. There is a BEPS framework of OECD. Right? And also there is a USA FATCA Act. What is the full form of FATCA? You, are, you don't need, need to know. So you just remember to counter BEPS. There is, it, it, it means some financial transaction countering act, something like that. So to counter BEPS, there is UP, USA FATCA Act is there. Along with that you have G20, G20 framework is there to counter BEPS, base erosion, profit shifting, na, counter madake, there is a G20 framework. And also there is double taxation avoidance agreement. DTAA is also there to counter BEPS. Double taxation, I have told what is double taxation. To, you know, uh, those who do double taxation avoidance, I mean uh, double taxation na, avoid madake, country, India has signed many agreements. So that is also signed to Curb, base erosion and profit shifting. These are the measures. Okay, we will discuss what is DTAA, GAR and everything. So, double taxation avoidance agreement. Very important. So, this agreement is signed between the countries. It is not a multilateral agreement. Multilateral andra among the countries, among multiple countries. Bilateral means among two countries. So, it is a bilateral agreement between the countries, right? I have told you double taxation and reno. Suppose a company is functioning in India and Singapore, it is taxed both in Singapore. Same income is taxed in both in India and Singapore. In order to avoid that, India there is a signing of double taxation avoidance agreement. As simple as that. So this double taxation avoidance agreement in the actually the investment is going to increase. Right? Double taxation illa and obviously economy will. Uh, this uh, companies or investors will feel happy and they are going to invest more, right? 
So India signed double taxation avoidance agreement. Had signed double taxation avoidance agreement. 80s alle martare with Mauritius. It's a tax haven. Ali matili erdu kare tax akbar dunta India. But this was misused actually misused by the companies. How did they misuse? What they did was see. There is company A. It was functioning in India. Hmm? It is not paying any taxes, or it is paying genuinely the taxes. As let us assume it is genuinely paying the taxes. So round tripping and you know, what does, see this company is in India. I. So what what does this company? So there is another company. Let us say England company B. It is a England company. Company B. So here is Mauritius. So what they do? They are going to uh, invest via Mauritius to India. So only the concept of place of effective management and all those things, origin rules also comes. Whereas this will be considered as Mauritius company because Mauritius in the investment act. So what happens? Indians also. Feel to do this. Indian also, Indians also plan to do this. How do they do this? Indian company will go to Mauritius, set up a shell company, fake company, and run from that company they are going to invest in India. Round tripping, the capital goes out of the country and comes back to the country in order to avoid taxes. So because of DTAA, they, it leads to round tripping. In Sumar Vasha, this happened actually. For lot many years. So later what they do? They stop it. We will discuss how uh, it, it gets stopped later on. So these companies, shell box companies are called mailbox companies. Shell companies are called mailbox companies. What is a mailbox? Why it is called a mailbox? See mailbox on the anche peti You are going to put a mail in that. And somebody will come and take the mail out of it. So actually that box doesn't have any utility per se because it just acts as a platform. So this shell company also acts like it just acts like a platform where money comes and goes. So it is called mailbox companies. India has signed double taxation avoidance agreement with 88 countries. 88 countries Jota India has the double taxation avoidance agreement. Right. Next. Rationalization of DTA, I told you. DTA has lot of disadvantages. Lot of disadvantages are there. So it needs to be corrected. It needs to be rationalized. How do we rationalize it? How do we rationalize it? Mauritius, we signed a limitation treaty, limitation of benefit treaty, and we are going to sign in 2016. So our treaty prakara, what happens after 2017? After 2017, March 31st, we are not going to give you the benefit of DTAA. DTAA ends March 21st or March 31st, 2017. DTAA ends and this benefit, uh, this DTA agreement na stop Martha. So, but 2017, March 31st, Munche investment, those are grandfathered. Grandfathered and Adike Yenu. Effect agala. Till that date, whatever round tripping, whatever happens, let it happen. Government is least bothered. But after that date, no round tripping, nothing. DTA benefits is limited. So, Ali Vargo Baro Indina, we are doing grandfathering it. Grandfathering it. So, what does a grandfather do? They protect us. Likewise, till March 31st, 2017, whatever the investment is there. Whether it is legal, illegal, that will be protected and the government gives the assurance. So next, to 2016, what we are signing? We are signing limitations of benefit treaty, benefit, limitation of benefit. So the concept of treaty shopping is very, very important. Treaty shopping. So you know the concept of shopping, right? Shopping means what? You go to a mall or somewhere, wherever you find cheap and best quality, you are going to buy that. So even these companies, international MNCs or Indian companies, what they do, they also do shopping, treaty shopping or tax shopping. Which country has the least tax? 
they are going to go and shop there. Did you get the concept of treaty shopping? Which country has the least minimum taxes? There they are going to invest. So this concept of treaty shopping is actually bad. Right? So treaty shopping is discouraged under LOB, limitation of benefit. And also this, whatever DTA, it is completely stop. Genuine Mauritius residence is Mauritius is the residence. This benefit is there. Genuine residents have the benefit. But not outsiders. England, France, USA cannot root their money or reroute their money via Mauritius. Right? Next, money laundering. Money laundering is stopped. I have told you what is money laundering. Havala transactions. Laundering the money from one place to another. Saving it in places where there is least transparency. Yeah? So, limitation of money uh, benefit treaty also stops the money laundering. These companies launder the money in order to avoid paying taxes. Right? Next, we have the concept of general anti-avoidance rules. GAR. I told you, under DTA, companies avoid paying taxes. Yes? In order to Avoid that avoidance. Companies are avoiding paying taxes. In order to go against that avoidance, we have general anti-avoidance rules. Very, very important. So, under this, what is done? Uh, what is being done? So, those who are avoiding taxes illegally, those who are avoiding taxes illegally, for them, tax benefits are not given. Tax benefits are given. Tax expenditure, tax benefits, and concessions, exemptions, and also DTA benefits. All these things are not given to tax avoiders. Tax benefit is denied to avoiders. First point. Next, uh, till March 2017, no GAR. Why? Because grandfathering will happen. Till March 2017, GAR will not apply because till then there is a grandfathering clause, right? Tax benefit, tax benefit is to uh, when does GAR apply? GAR, when does it get applied? If the tax concession is more than 3 crore, you are claiming tax concession of more than 3 crore rupees. Yes? Then it comes under the provision of GAR. Ali orgu up to 3 crore, GAR will not apply. You make a profit of or your taxation is up to 2.5 crore. GAR will not apply. 3 crore in the mail you are taking exemption, then this avoidance rules will come. There will be stringent checking, stringent background check. Are you really avoiding? Are you really claiming the tax benefit? All these things. Right? So, this is done to curb the tax evasion. Tax evasion, Martharala, those who evade the taxes. So, some uh, just like how criminals avoid, avoid, evade police, evade the police from arresting them. Similarly, companies uh, uh, evade the tax. So, GAR Ali, it is going to curb the tax evasion, right? And also, Ili, there is a concept of look through than look at. What is the concept of look at and look through? See, the look at concept, and right? look at it. Look at it, and you are just looking the outside. If you just look at the outside, there is no illegality because Indian company can go to Mauritius and come back. What is wrong in that? If it is, if British can do it, why can't Indian Santa? Look at concept. But government applies the concept of look through. Look through, and you see through it. Actually, there is tax evasion. So, for that, we have to apply the taxes. And this concept of look through will come. So, government, general gar and the bandra, 
you have to know the concept of look through and look at, right? Along with that, you have this, for one famous example is the word of phone case. So, in 2008, actually what happens, there will be a company called Vodafone Achisar. Uh, Achisar uh, SX, Achisar or something is there. So, it was called as Hach, H -U -S -T -C -H. Achisar SR or something, the name is. So, there used to be that pug dog used to go in the advertisement. So, that is the Ach company. Okay. So, this Ach company got itself uh, sold to Vodafone. So, what they do, in order to avoid the taxes, See, illy, if they did it, within India, if they had signed the agreement, take over, if their company was taken over within India, yeah, if the dilution or transfer of ownership was done within India, there was taxation, they were susceptible to taxes. But in order to avoid the taxes, what they do? Same agreement they are going to sign in outside India. Same agreement they will sign outside India in order to avoid the taxes. But where is the functioning happening? It is happening in India. Actual function happens in India. But just the agreement is sound, sound outside. So government applies the concept of POEM, place of effective management and imposes taxes on Vodafone. Some crores together of taxes were imposed on Vodafone. So recently also, uh, one or two years also, the case was running in Supreme Court. Case was running in Supreme Court. I think recently the Supreme Court gave a favorable judgment in uh, for Vodafone. Retrospective taxation. I told you what is retrospective taxation. So financial rules 2012 prakara, the taxation happens. The rules come in 2012, but transaction has happened in 2008. So, retrospectively, in the date in the, you are applying the tax and the Vodafone had filed a case, right? So, that is the concept of Vodafone case. Next, place of effective management I have discussed. Where the company is effectively managing. Hmm? That is the concept of place of effective Management, this place of effective management concept comes in Finance Act. So, what is a Finance Act? What is a Finance Bill? Appropriation Act, Appropriation Bill. All these things I have discussed in Indian polity. Yes. So, Finance Act 2013 prakara, this concept comes and idrally it is applicable to Indian resident companies. Indian resident company. If a company is resident in India, if it is functioning in India, then these rules apply. Within the boundary of India, they should be functioning. They should have some work. Then this place of effective management will apply. Right? And it is used to target the shell companies. Shell companies are duplicate companies. Duplicate companies outside. Adhana target madadike this place of effective management, where the function is, is happening. Hmm? You might set up the headquarters somewhere. In that headquarters, there might be some, just one table and chair. But where is the actual manufacturing take place, taking place? That is a concept of POEM. So, it is used to target the shell companies. Next, you have OECD and digital tax. This is one example where I am, uh, what I am giving. OECD, I have told you the full form of OECD and digital tax. What is digital tax? Which are the digital companies? So, all this, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Apple, all these companies are digital, Microsoft, yeah, all these companies are digital companies upon which digital tax is imposed. So, OECD countries, tax evasion, so OECD countries, what they do, they impose a digital tax. They also take up a similar provision of POEM or POEM, POEM. So, they also say where the business is there, there tax should be imposed. Business actual, that their tax should be imposed on the OECD says in the concept of digital tax, right? Okay, next. 
tax information exchange agreement tax information how much tax we are paying what is the tax rate what are the companies that are paying tax what are the indian companies that are paying tax in usa what are the us companies that are paying taxes in india as any company evades at the taxes what is the tax exemption they have claimed have they stored any illegal money all these tax related information is exchanged as per this agreement tax information exchange agreement right so it leads to international cooperation alwa the cooperation among the countries increase if we do have this agreement alwa so tax cooperation increases among the countries there is a international cooperation according to this agreement so india has signed 21 tax information exchange agreement 21 if if any indians are uh, got an illegal money and they have signed it uh, they have saved it in some other country e21 countries or they have to give the tax information and in, in turn our residents nammal idre we have to give them tax information this is the concept of tax information so i will give you example to better understand this there is this concept of mutual legal assistance treaty mutual legal assistance treaty according to this treaty what happens uh, there is this concept of extradition 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 andre no indian do does some crime and goes and hides in britain vijay malya mehul chokski all these people they go and hide in some foreign country we have to extradite him to india that is done as per this mutual legal assistance treaty so legally that is the case extradition and right tax ali tiea it is similar yes so and also there is a convention you can quote this convention when it comes to tax matters convention on mutual administrative assistance in tax matters convention it is a convention it is it is not an agreement it is a belief or a rules which we follow generally convention on mutual administrative assistance administration is going to assist each other in tax matters tax matters if somebody signs this convention then they are bound to do it this is the concept next we'll move towards transfer pricing and apa i have told you yesterday what is transfer pricing see there is a oda let us take the example of vodafone itself vodafone and there is indian subsidiary is called vodafone india right or vodafone idea idea is only partnered in india not world over indian company is called vodafone idea yes so what they do andre india dali tax jasti ide anta they are going to show less profits in india less profits are shown in india ireland dali let us say their headquarters is there they are going to show high profits profit source le bekala or else how how are they going to utilize if you show the profit then only it is white money so ireland dali they are going to show huge profit india dali they are going to show less profit so in order to show the profit, what they do certain products certain things andre see let us say this company is going to pay for auditors vodafone india is going to pay for auditors yeah or it is going to spend on something there are some products a products nella vodafone vodafone uh, ireland ik transfer madibudut and they are going to transfer vodafone india as some product yes that product will be sold to vodafone world let us consider or vodafone ireland at a very less price yes in order to avoid the taxes adanna ill sale madidre tax jasti agutalla so they are going to sell it to vodafone ireland alli profit na thostare so this is called as transfer pricing transfer of products from subsidiary to parent 
or parent company to subsidiary in order to avoid taxes, transfer pricing. So, idrally, it is similar to BEPS, base erosion and profit shifting. Hege base erod akta de. Similarly, products are getting eroded from India ala. And also, subsidiary sells goods to parent company or vice versa. I told you. Vice versa. Ivaga, either it may take place in domestic arena or internationally. Domestic arag bodu, within the sale might take place within India or internationally, right? So, these are the two things. So, India has a transfer pricing code. With respect to this, India has a transfer pricing code. If you are transferring some goods from your subsidiary to parent or parent to subsidiary, you have to do it according to transfer pricing code. Other outside madre, there will be penalty. So, in Martha, I told you, they are shifting the profit, right? They are shifting the profit from India to foreign company in order to avoid taxes. That is why under transfer pricing, they are shifting the profit. NEK, corporate tax is high. Corporate tax is high, so less profit is shown. All these points I have told. Yes, and also it is leading to tax evasion and money laundering. India has lost taxes. And also money is being laundered. Money laundering, I have told you. Without paying the taxes, illegally you are transferring the money somewhere else. It is leading to money laundering. So, Hagagi, there is a solution for that. That is called Advanced Pricing Agreement. APA. Advanced Pricing Agreement. What is APA, Andre? See, understand the etymology. Etymology, Andre, how, what the word means. Advanced. So, before the selling of goods, before the selling of goods take place, prices will be fixed. Andre, Vodafone India is selling goods to Vodafone Ireland. Before selling of the goods, Vodafone India will contact the revenue department or the finance ministry and fix the rate that I am going to sell the product to my parent company at this rate. And you should not come in between. You should not come in between. Rate is fixed. So that is advanced pricing. Pricing is prices is fixed. Advanced pricing agreement. APA. Right? So, in the arm's length price or no sweetheart price, arm's length price. Andre, you can sell your goods to parent company, there is no issue. But that should not be done in such a way in order to avoid taxes, right? So, Adike, what this uh, APA says, you treat your parent company just like any other company. See, what of on India, what of on Ireland, yeah, some goods they are selling. Huh? Would they sell the same good to some other company at the same price? No. They are doing it because to avoid taxes. Alpha. They might even give free. So, some other company, they will charge the proper money. So, this according to this APA, they say you treat your parent company from arm's length. Arm's length, and one Udda. Treat your parent company as some other company and sell the product. Then we don't have any issue. Right? So, arm's length principle. Yes? So, also no sweetheart price. Andre, your parent is not your sweetheart. To give it concession or free. So, our principle prakara, you are going to do it. Andre. So, illa nagate, government and business will negotiate. I told you. Vodafone India will negotiate with the finance ministry. So, government to business, there is a negotiation. Eagadrinda, what it does, there is certainty to taxpayers, companies, yeah? there is proper certainty or sure they will have proper confidence that government will not go against us. Amele, they are not going to come and file cases against us because we have already made the agreement. Anta. So, this is the concept of advanced price agreement, and each agreement is signed for 5 years. Agreements are signed for a term of 5 years. Yes? Okay. Next, you have the concept of Tobin tax. Tobin tax. What is Tobin tax? Tobin tax only foreign exchange transaction. See, foreign exchange is coming into India, comes to India. 
and foreign exchange goes goes out of india so both on the foreign exchange coming into india and for go, foreign exchange foreign money going out of india there should be some tax anta heltane idana james tobin annono devise martane tobin tax foreign exchange mele transaction mele we have to impose this tax why because foreign exchange is called hot money hot money andre it will come it will come with same fast with the same fast it is going to disappear at the same speed it is going to come with the same speed it is going to disappear from the country so in order to curb that in order to curb that speculation in speculative investment tobin tax is imposed tobin tax so check speculative flow ge we are going to invest so long term only if you somebody is investing if somebody is investing for 15 years 20 years their money into india then tobin tax will need not be applied but short term yes short term only it is going to a uh, short term only it is going to lead to what speculative investment so tobin tax should be imposed anta heltare so this will reduce the exchange rate volatility exchange rate volatility means what exchange rate that is 1 dollar is 75 rupees yeah so what if the dollar will be 60 rupees today 80 rupees tomorrow 90 rupees day after and again comes back to 70 there is volatility right volatility and the price is not fixed it is moving yeah so to avoid that volatility yava volatile agutte duddu patapat anta bartta idi patapat it is going out then there will be volatility other than speculative investment illa andre volatility will not be there there will be redu reduction in volatility yes okay so it is applicable twice when the, when it is applicable once when the money comes into india and once when when the money goes out of india so why this tobin tax is important south asian crisis i told you south east asian tiger economies 1977 so entire economy was dependent on foreign money foreign capital suddenly 1977 us interest rate gets high all the money goes out so in order to curb that south east asian crisis reethi crisis aagbardu anta tobin tax is imposed yes and also india doesn't prefer this tax why india doesn't prefer this tax see first of all foreign money coming to india is needed we need foreign money adr mele if we are imposing tobin tax foreign money will come not come at all so india doesn't prefer this tobin tax but uh, some countries are imposing tax on idu uh, financial transactions mele financial transaction tax some financial transactions mele foreigners do some financial transaction there they are imposing this ftt that is a form of tobin tax and also it is called robin hood tax robin hood tax and what used to robin used to used to do take money from rich give it to poor so are it it is called take money from foreign investors and give it to domestic investors so it is also called robin to tax india dali we don't impose it directly but indirectly we are imposing you know stt matte ctt security transaction tax and commodity transaction tax i told you securities andre shares equity bonds alli transaction andre we there we are imposing taxes commodities just like share commodity li transaction andre we are imposing commodity transaction tax that is a form of tobin tax in india next you have pigovian tax pigovian tax andre pollution mele if you are putting a tax negative things mele if you are putting a tax then it is called a pigovian tax your fossil fuel alva so least environment friendly vehicles irutala avr mele tax jaasti hakbeku because they are those buggers are spoiling the environment yeah so pigovian tax on those products and those uh, processes where there is negative externality there is negative outcome of that activity so we have carbon tax carbon tax carbon tax is there in india so that is a so 
ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಎಮಿಷನ್ ಸೆಸ್ ಅಂತ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ವಿ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಎಮಿಷನ್ ಸೆಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಪಿಗೋವಿಯನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಬೈ ಎ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ ಇನ್ ಡೆಲ್ಲಿ ದೇ ದೇ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಎಮಿಷನ್ ಸೆಸ್ ಯಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಪಿಗೋವಿಯನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಪೇಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಪೇ ಫಾರ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಿಗೋವಿಯನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಪೇಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ನೌ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಗೂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಗೂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬೈ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಶೋರ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಸಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇರಲ್ಲ ನೋ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ಫೈವ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ವಿಲ್ ಫೈವ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ವೈ ಟು ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಫೈ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಅಪನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಂತ ಇತ್ತು ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಒನ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಯು ಬೈ ಸಿ ಇವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ಸಿ ಈಸ್ ಪೆಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ನೋ ಸೊ ಇವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಹೊಸೂರ್ ಬಾರ್ಡರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಟು ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ದ ಪೆಸ್ಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ದಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗೂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ವೇರ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಯಾ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಸೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ so many taxes were there actually people used to get confused never ever anyone question why are you imposing this tax on us because first of all it is confusing a tax yavide ide anta there used to be a list product e tax is to like now only two lines cgst this much sdst this much multiplicity of taxes multiple taxes is so that is why that was removed one next cascading effect cascading effect ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಓಕೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಐರನ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಐರನ್ ಐರನ್ ಮೇಲ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾರೆ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ to make the tires adr mel tax aaktare assembly wire gil beku adr mel tax aaktare plastic is needed fiber is needed adr mel tax aaktare software is needed headlights are needed every product they will put taxes and also assembly made on the profit human resource labor kuli adr mel tax aaktare adella after all these when they sell the car then also they put taxes so there will be a series of taxes every tax see what i am saying is you are put, labor let us say uh, uh, iron iron the chassis 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 of the car chassis adru mele you have put the tax already here isn't it unfair that you are putting the tax on the same thing again here ಫೈನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗಿರಲ್ವಾ ಇಲ್ಲೂ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಸ
So that was happening in GST. I mean, before GST. That was Adu Koskara. Then variations. Every state had different sales tax. VAT. Every state had different. So, is actually against the concept of unity of India. Alva. You buy a car in Pondicherry, you buy a car in Bangalore, the prices are different. So, isn't it? Suppose Pondicherry, it is a centrally administered territory, union territory. So, the prices are less. Karnataka consumers, it is, isn't it disadvantageous? Isn't it unfair? Yes. So, to curb all this and also exemptions. Some states used to give exemptions to their consumers. But other states were not giving. Yeah. And also, uh, South India, the, least, uh, they, they, the tax that you used to get collected in South India is huge. All these tax were spent in North India. Isn't it exempting the North India from taxes? Yeah. So, all this, uh, along with that, slabs, tax slab. Tax slab means the rate of tax. Re the rate at which tax is imposed, imposed is called a tax slab. Tax slab used to differ across the states. One state and one slab is there, one state and one slab is That is there. And also, there was lot of tax evasion. Lot of tax evasion. Because of all these reasons, GST law was bought in. GST law was bought in. And the Amendment Act is 101st Constitutional Amendment Act. 101st Constitutional Amendment Act, Marthivi. Along with that, we will do bring in CGST Act. SG, CGST Act and IGST Act. Central will bring these two statutory provisions and one constitutional amendment. Along with that, states will bring in SGST Act. State Goods Services Act, na, every state will promulgate or pass. Right? Short history of GST. GST Munche One, earlier, there was a concept of VAT, value added tax. This was brought in by Manmohan Singh, the greatest economist of India. What and what used to they used to do? Uh, what only value added tax? I told you no. From each level, value is getting added, right? Illi bari chassi sidi do illi products assembly agirte, illi painting agirte. Every level value is getting added. That was tried to be cascading of effect was tried to be addressed through what. This is the modified VAT. Modified VAT. This is with respect to central level. Central excise duty. Excise duty and reno upon the manufacturing of products. Excise duty is imposed. Excise duty and not upkari ilake. Excise duty, excise. So, in the excise department, it is related to alcohol. Excise and it is related to manufacturing. So, sen VAT and but at the same time. State only sales tax. Whatever you sell, other men tax impose. So, states, what they do, they also start calling their tax as VAT. Confusion is that confusion start to happen. Ili sen VAT. VAT in the Shuruagi do mod VAT, mod VAT in the sen VAT. States start calling their tax as VAT. So, what they do, in order to curb the confusion, central government will start calling it tax as excise duty again. Excise duty and the career to start matter. So, GST Munche, the status was there was excise duty and also VAT. This was the status. So, why there is a need for GST? I told you the need. There is a need for one market. One nation, one market. That is the first need. Then, I told you multiplicity of taxes were there. That is one need. Then, to make this tax process, to make the tax process, Simplified tax process na simplify we have bought in the GST along with that to increase the tax base. To increase the tax base, we have bought in the Andre. See, before GST, I told you a lot of products were outside taxation. So now, because of GST, the base is increased. Lot of products which were not taxed are now taxed. And to increase the beyond C, what is beyond C? I have told, not fiancé, beyond C. Beyond C means when growth increases, tax should increase, tax collection should increase. 
along with growth with the tax increases that is called tax beyond C, right? Tax beyond C increases, costs will come down, costs. Cascading effect now if we remove, for whom it is advantageous? Consumers it is advantageous because they are going to get the products at less price. Yes, costs next. Competitive export, it is going to make the export competitive. Product, you know, prices definitely export competitiveness will increase. Then also it will curb the black money. GST will curb the black money. These are the needs of the uh, GST. Nature of GST, what is the nature? It is a comprehensive law. What do you mean by comprehensive? Comprehensive means all included, all the taxes are included. Now, consumer doesn't have any confusion. CGST, SGST. Yes, that's all. Is, a, is the GST apply, applicable on petrol? No. Is it applicable on export? No. GST is not applicable on export. Export and import, GST illa. Export and import, we are still using customs duty and exports duty. Yes. Okay, it is applicable only within India. Next. Nature, it is a multi-stage tax, multi-stage. I told you, the production, multi-stage. Every stage, the tax get added, consumer finally plays. So, you ru kabna na tagoladike, aira na tagoladike, you ru tax pay maadikitare. Again, e chassis na bai maadake, e company yonu tax pay maadikitane. Adralik, iron tax include agirutte. So, you ru ge, the government will give input tax credit. You have already paid the tax. You have already paid the tax. Consumer will also pay the tax. Producer will also pay the tax. Consumer will also pay the tax. So, government get double benefit. So, in order to stop that, producer will get input tax credit, ITC. Input tax credit na kodta hai. And excess tax collection na giritta la. Illu collecta giritta tax. So, illu collecta hai. Illu collecta hai. Illu illu final lago collecta hai. So, these are all excess tax government gave. because it is already collected once here. Why are you collecting everywhere? So, URI government will give input tax credit, ITC. Yes, that is one thing. Next, it is destination based. Suppose the product is being manufactured in Karnataka, it is sold in Tamil Nadu. So, the tax is imposed in Tamil Nadu, not Karnataka. It is destination based. Then, the burden of tax. Burden of tax will not fall on the producer, it falls on the consumer. Right? Tax, entire burden we have to bear. Producers mele, enu burden irla because they are getting input tax credit. And also, exports, I told you, not included under GST, imports are also not included. Next, gain for manufacturing state. So, I told you, Karnataka is exporting, but Karnataka gain profit too. What is the profit? One is our market will increase. Market increase agata stay. Tax will go to Tamil Nadu. But our market, the more and more production will happen. Destinational products will act there. But producionally, there will be a lot of production. Obviously, right? If Tamil Nadu is a destination state, our products are selling there and they are getting more profit. They are getting more tax because of Karnataka product. They are going to promote Karnataka product there, right? So, Ahavaga, our market will increase. That is the first thing. Next, second thing is Karnataka manufacturers get, they will get input tax credit. Input tax credit they will get. It will not go to Tamil Nadu. And the third thing is IGST. See, when the product Karnataka le manufacture agi Karnataka le sale adre. Then CGST and IG, uh, CGST and SGST will follow. Apply. CGST and SGST. Adene, the product gets manufactured in Karnataka and gets sold in Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu. Then CGST and IGST will apply. IGST, at least SGST apply agala. Yeah. So, this IGST it is collected by the center. Ah, IGST na they are going to give to Karnataka because you are manufacturing, so you take it. So that is the benefit for 
the manufacturing state i told you cgst is there igst is there sgst what is sgst igst cgst i have discussed next under and constitutional amendment pakkara we do it right gst and center state financial relations center state financial relations any they see according to the constitution seventh schedule there is proper division of subjects union list state list concurrent list union list items only the center can import impose taxes state list subjects only the states can impose taxes right similarly illu kuda illi illu kuda center state ku financial relations are but illi illi there is one catch what is the catch andre see earlier it was easy central list center or tax hakkolloru illi state or hakkolloru now same product cgst is also applying sgst is also applying see earlier only sales so ididre state list product idre only say state used to impose a tax center had no role state central list idre only center used to impose taxes but now on the same product both the taxes are getting imposed so constitutionally there is no provision for this same product mele center state ibru ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕೋದು ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾವಿಷನ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಡೂ ಅಂಡರ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಟೂ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ದೇ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಟೂ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಬೋತ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಡಸೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ right pre gst position what was there i told you there was excise duty sales tax central sales tax services tax customs duty additional customs duty yes and also uh, uh, there used to be custom additional customs duty all these taxes are there earlier so many taxes right So, and also entertainment tax octroi yeah all these taxes were there earlier so all these things are reduced to just 2 to 3 taxes csg gst igst sgst gst council see earlier center tax used to be center decided by center state tax used to be decided by the states now both are deciding the taxes so which is the authority which is going to decide which is the authority center state mix agiro on authority irbeka because both are imposing the taxes both should decide that authority is the gst council gst council is the authority yes so according to this gst council see gst council it is a constitutional body because constitutional amendment martare just like 246a they bring in 279A, 279A article ನ ತಂದಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಅನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹೂ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ದೆನ್ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ರೆವಿನ್ಯೂ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಟೆರಿಟರಿ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಲ್ಲಿ ಪುದುಚೇರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಜಮ್ಮು ಅಂಡ್ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ್ this is the composition of gst council idralla voting eno center will have one third voting 100% vote ittu andre one third voting is done by center and two third voting is done by states together amale generally it works on the principle of consensus it works on the principle of consensus andre odambadike mulka they can uh, they arrive at a solution but but uh, now recent time some issues are happening between center and state that is why they are adhering to voting voting ige they are depending on voting principle yes okay so uh, rates what are the rates there are five slabs what are the five slab 0 percent, 5% 5% 12% 18% 28% these are the five slabs 0 5 12 18 and 28 these are the five slabs under which taxes are imposed then there are some exemptions also exemptions 
what are the exemptions suppose 40 lakh ginta your turnover is less than 40 lakh your business you are doing a business if the turnover is less than 40 lakh then you are exempted from paying gst 40 lakh in the kadame idre there is a uh, exemption from gst and also uh, that is one thing uh, and also exemptionally actually one more uh, concept electricity petroleum all are exempted from it gst council cannot decide on petroleum and electricity real estate all these things aviation turbine fuel diesel gst council cannot decide then there is a limit they impose the limit andre this product only this much should be the taxation limit it cannot exceed the taxation limit anta they impose the limit and also they impose the bindingness see whatever the gst council decides it is binding GST council and decide madate it is binding on the all the states and center. Next members I have told you who are the members, right? Next, so it is getting uh, too much congested. Let me clear it. Okay, Constitutional Amendment Act 101, 2016. Changes in madru constitutionally. I told you the changes. 246A article was brought in. 279A article was brought in. These were the changes in the constitution because of introduction of GST. Yes. So, these two changes and also there is one change with respect to article 269A. 269A deals with services. Service tax. So, service tax now comes under GST. So, 269A stands abolished. So, these three changes, right? Next, voting in the GST council, I told you, it is based on consensus. Majorly, it is based on consensus and there is weightage. The weightage is two-third, one-third. Two-third for all the states combined together, one-third exclusively for the center. Then, what are the functions? Functions, Andre, subsuming the taxes. I told you, you now there were so many taxes. Everything is subsumed into CGST or SGST now. Subsuming is done by this GST council. Exemption of taxes. What are the taxes that are, I mean, what are the products that are exempted from GST? That is, uh, that is mandated by the GST council. What are the products that are exempted? Uh, as of now, I told you crude oil, all those things. Next, laws, GST laws, CGST, IGST, SGST laws, Adramel recommendation code GST council. Turnover, I told you, 40 lakh in the kadme idre, there is no GST. That is told by the GST council. Along with that, it decides the slabs. Slabs, either slab is yala. It can increase the slabs or decrease the slab or fix the price of the particular slab. That is one thing. Then, disasterally, it is going to collect more taxes. GST council, NRO disaster, Aitu, cyclone, Aitu, earthquake, Aitu, landslide, Aitu, volcano, Aitu. In under all these conditions, GST can impose excess taxes in order to solve the disaster crisis, right? Along with that, northeast, Illi, see, turnover, Illi, 40 lakh, Idre. GST exemption no, only 20 lakh is the GST exemption. Turnover 20 lakh is no, they need not pay any GST. Yes? Okay. Next, petroleum. Petroleum products, the whenever GST council decides, then only the taxation will happen on petrol. GST council will decide on that. And also, it decides on the disputes. Disputes between states and states. Disputes between center and states. With respect to financial matters. Is decided by the GST council. And also it awards compensation. Why there is compensation? Actually there is a proper GST Compensation Act 2017. According to which. 
states sir center is mandated to give 5 years compensation to states because of which center has imposed additional cess compensation cess anta impose madide upon consumers for 5 years why this compensation i told you karnataka is selling a product tamil nadu is buying the product here karnataka there is no tax it is not getting any tax so all these states karnataka maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu huh? all these are manufacturing state they are manufacturing they are good in manufacturing so they when they are bound to lose tax because it is a destination based tax these manufacturing states are bound to lose tax revenue in order to compensate the tax revenue this compensation act was passed we will compensate for 5 years center will compensate for 5 years but within that 5 year the center i mean the states who are the producer states idiyala they have to find a way they have to find a way in order to get more taxes they have to find new resources for taxes 5 years they can sit on the centers as a assurance right next we have the concept of tax lapse and under gst i have discussed the tax lapse 0 12 18 05 12 18 and 28 then taxes merged into gst i told that one also excise duty service tax customs duty sales tax entertainment tax octroi all these things are merged into gst next gst and revenue neutral rate what is gst and revenue neutral rate to so see uh under gst see <laughs> sorry the under gst government is getting some revenue hmm earlier they were getting some revenue some let us say some less revenue now they are getting more revenue so this revenue neutral say, rate says that you should not get more revenue because it will be burden for consumers so you should devise the gst in such a way that the revenue is neutral revenue water you are getting is neutral so setting the, the gst rate at such a rate that you are not getting any excess revenue no excess revenue compared to previous this is the revenue neutral rate right Re uh, revenue uh, rate ik bandre there is one is standard rate is there the standard rate at which taxes are imposed is called uh, standard rate then there is fitment rate fitment rate andre it is excess revenue excess revenue bandre yavadadru rate na increase maadi excess revenue bandre then it is called fitment rate revenue neutral rate andre government is getting no not getting any revenue excess revenue that is revenue neutral rate right so this is the concept of revenue neutral rate gst in the excess revenue should not come to the government so that rate is called revenue neutral rate this is the concept next dual gst dual gst i told you cgst sgst that is the dual gst yes then gst compensation to states act i told you what is advantage see gst uh, gst is advanced advantages for consuming states consuming states ke it is not producing states ke it is not going to help that is why in order to compensate for the excess the, the central government has levied levied additional cess it has levied additional cess in order to compensate the states right along with that gst and cross empowerment what is the concept of gst and cross empowerment who is collecting the gst anta who will collect the gst so do you think sgst is collected by state gcgst is collected by center no see why this cross empowerment andre see let let us say cgst is collected by the center and sgst is collected by the state so 
the person who is paying the GST has to interact with state authorities also, central authorities also. Central tax department who has to pay the taxes, state tax department who has to pay the SGST. So, in order to reduce that, double interaction is double. There should be only single interaction, single window. So, what they have decided is in order to reduce the interaction, they have fixed the limit up to 1.5 crore. Virgo, the limit, if, if the limit is up to 1.5 crore, below 1.5 crore income, the GST will be collected by states. 90% of the cases, 1.5 crore income, 90% of the cases, the GST will be handled by the states. Rest 10% will be handled by the center. Rest 10% will be handled by the center, right? More than 1.5 crore turnover or tax which is being imposed, then it is handled by both the sender and state in the 50-50 ratio. 50% cases will go to center, 50% will go to states. This is the concept of GST and cross empowerment. Yes? Next, anti-profiteering clause of GST. What is anti-profiteering clause? See, because of GST, because of GST, actually, it actually profited a lot to the retailers. Vyapari GST was a lot of benefit. Why? Because they are getting input tax credit. They are not paying any taxes. We are paying the taxes, indirect tax. More than that, they are, they are getting input tax credit. Moreover, that because of GST, their taxes income, I mean, their income has increased. Right? So, what the government says, this benefit, what you are getting, retailers or wholesalers, sellers, what the, the benefit you are getting, you should pass it to the consumers. You have to reduce your price. Anta. So, if you are not reducing the price, then it will lead to excess profiteering, just like revenue neutral rate. Tara. Illi, uh, retailers are getting excess profit. So, you have to pass on your benefit to the consumers. If you don't pass it, you will be put, there will be a penalty for it. We will impose a penalty and the government has won. That is the anti-profiteering clause. The retailers or wholesalers should not make any illegal profit. They should reduce the rate. That is the concept. Next, to manage this, there is a national anti-profiteering authority. National anti-profiteering authority. This checks the sellers. You can suppose, let's say before GST, you are for a product. Let us say uh, some deodorant. You are, uh, you are paying 100 rupees. So, after GST, you are paying the same 100 rupees. However, before GST, the product used to come to the retailer for 80 rupees. Now, it is coming for 70 rupees for him. So, he is benefiting excess 10, 10 rupees. When you get to know, you can complain to They will impose the penalty. Next, GST network. So, it is the backbone of the GST. GST collection now. Where all GST is collected, everything is managed by the GST network. Earlier, it is a no, not for profit organization. It is a not for profit company. It is registered under Companies Act 2013. So, Section 2018, GST network is registered. It is the backbone network of GST. You have to pay, go and pay GST. Where do you pay? You go to GST network. Yes, earlier the government was owning just 49%, 51% was with private entities. Now, they have taken over 100%. 100% is with government. Now, recent change with respect to GST network. It is the backbone network, right? Settlement mechanism, it has a settlement mechanism. What is settlement mechanism? So, you are a consumer, you are a producer, I mean seller. You take the money from consumer. You are going to pay the GST. For a producer or a seller, you are paying to paying the GST via the GST network. GST network, you are paying the GST. 
immediately within days you will get the income tax input tax credit whatever the excess tax you have paid Allah that you will get as input tax credit within days within some days so this settlement is also done by the GST network it is automated it is automated right so this was done actually by Infosys GST network na Infosys or Marathar then GST and petrol products I told you petrol products whenever the GST council decides they can impose tax on the petrol products so Ivaga petrol products only so now how much is the tax petrol melon so there is more than 50 percent of tax on petrol petrol is coming at coming to India at 50 rupees we are selling it at 75 rupees 50 percent tax on petrol why states do not want petrol to be under GST why see under GST which is the maximum rate highest rate under GST highest tax lab 28 percent so now they are getting 50 percent tax states 50 percent states after 50 percent hour after central states are getting 50 percent tax oh, sorry sorry 50 percent including both center and states right so if you put either electric to the government you will get central or state approximately 30 percent they are getting 20 percent goes to center yeah so suppose the states uh, they agree to the GST the maximum that can be put is 28 percent state guest by since it is equal states will get just 14 percent so 30 percent only 14 per day their, their petrol revenue is going to reduce less than half that is why states are opposing GST on petrol products that is the reason so what is the mechanism now we have value added tax on petrol petrol mele we have value added tax so that is why these petrol prices are different from different states so it is good it is good from consumer perspective that GST is imposed on petrol because it is going to reduce the cost for consumers yes okay they can impose some extra says they can put some 28 percent tax on uh, petrol they can put 10 percent extra stress say let's say they are you know carbon emission session on petrol right by like that they can because it is going to make the petrol price uniform throughout the delhi the petrol price is almost 10 to 15 rupees less than karnataka yeah okay next goods and service tax you have the gst benefits gst benefits small entrepreneurs and small traders yes it does benefit earlier what happens nobody the small traders petty traders never paid the gst they never paid it now they are paying the gst because they are benefiting they are getting input tax credit they are getting input tax credit and according to gst bandmele their profits have also increased due to various reasons yes uh, itc is one reason so small traders i told you up to 40 lakh there is no tax amele innu vandide composition scheme see 40 lakh aste na gst after that up, after 40 lakh up to 1 crore 1 to 1.5 crore tanka ide up to 1.5 crore your turnover is 1.5 crore you need not pay excess gst your gst is fixed under 1% aste up to 1.5 crore turnover idre per year your gst is just 1% under the composition scheme compose compose everything see up to 1.5 crore 1.5 crore turnover only there are lot of products small small bangles uh, earrings uh, pen no uh, pencil no uh, variety of products will be there so other mail ella gst if you keep calculating on small small product it is hectic for the government other in the just they, they are not going to get revenue also small small thing what they do in order to settle it out if you have 1.5 crore worth uh, turnover you just pay one percent gst and settle it off no nothing no more calculation nothing no auditing nothing this is the concept of composition scheme yes okay next compliance cost has reduced compliance cost has reduced 
earlier in order to comply with the taxation there was lot of cost gst band mele you 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 earlier they have to go to the tax authorities pay the tax authorities bribe them hmm? tax rate should be different so many paperwork lot of things and your time will also get wasted now just at the click of the button you can pay the taxes so compliance cost has reduced small traders it has benefited petty traders for them it has made i told you see 90% of indian economy is informal economy those companies which are not registered after coming many of the small traders traders after coming of gst they have registered so it has helped the economy to uh, uh, turn from formal economy sorry informal economy to formal economy i have told you what is the difference between formal and informal in my earlier classes next you have the concept of a harmonized system of uh, nomenclature in gst see there are variety of products how do you identify the individual product just like you are given your aadhar every product suppose let's say bangles or let's say pen the pen is given a pen pens every pen is given one uh, nomenclature hsn code that if the, this is the hsn code the product is pen anta and the tax is different company mele la depend agala if it is a pen hsn code is same yes okay it is in gst it is impo, uh, uh, it is uh, followed in gst so actually idanna modlu bandidu world customs organization alli customs customs and reno import and export so these customs authorities in order to differentiate the various export and import products they introduced this hsn code more than 5000 products in the world were bought under hsn code this product they cannot say see the packages will be sealed export import alli they wouldn't know what is inside so adr mele hsn code print madirtar so as soon as they get to know see this is this code this bag contains rubber this bag contains bag leather bag something like that they will it is a leather product so hsn code world so it is a six digit code world only more than 5000 products are under hsn code next gst and composition scheme i already told you composition means 1% tax up to 1.5 crore turnover 40 40 lakh mele 1.5 crore kelage next to e way bill see earlier suppose a product we being shipped by goa to tamil nadu they have to pass through check post of goa karnataka tamil nadu all these check post the check post buggers used to take money corruption they used to amle one more thing this in, in this check post there will be long long queues big big queues in order to clear the check post only you have to wait for one or two or hour nam cars ela they used to leave early some 10 to 15 minutes but lorries they have to wait for hours together in order to clear the check post so that is why all the check post inspectors have become crorepatis crorepatis yeah so this e way bill e way bill andre as soon as you 5 km is not 50 km uh, i think yes it is more than 50 km yes if you are shipping a product more than 50 km illinda vasur it is more than 50 km so immediately if your product as soon as you bill na ready maartta idange e way bill bandibudutte so that driver has to carry this e way bill along with him whoever stops check post rtg or rto police whoever stops he has to show that e way bill that i have the license to carry this product from this particular state to this particular state e way bill immediately gets generated via e way bill we can track ellinda elli hogta ide product anta and also rf id radio frequency id e way bill alli rf id barutte so just by scanning that rf id you can know the inspector just by rf id e way bill alli rf id iruttala just by scanning it he will know where this product is coming from where it is going what is the cost of the product what is this product everything every detail what is the company everything so it includes rfid gst and federalism 
GST and federalism. Federalism and there is no division of power between center and states. GST look order, there is division, there is SGST, CGST, IGST. So it is in sync with federalism. Though, it, though we say it is one nation, one market, and I am saying we are via GST, we are proposing one nation, one market. But this is GST in synchronization with federalism. It is synchronized because it is making the federalism easy. It is pushing us towards cooperative federalism. Cooperative federalism is what we push. GST and federalism. Yes? Okay. GST and fiscal autonomy issues. Fiscal autonomy issues. Fiscal autonomy means what? Autonomy means independence. Autonomy means independence. So, fiscal autonomy and financial independence. See, earlier, earlier, every state can impose the GST on their state products. State list of alien products is the other way. they could you put the GST, whatever they want. Now, it is being decided by the central fiscal council, GST council. GST council is deciding. So, in GST council, only, there is excess representation of center. One third has to vote, but ruling party, ruling party, colluda, they will pass the bill easily. So, it is actually states are objecting that it is against our fiscal independence. It is impinging our financial independence. And the states are objecting and also they are objecting with respect to now during COVID. There was no compensation proper that they are objecting. So, there are so many objections from the state. Voting proverb, you know, there is objection. Then decision making, alone, they are objecting. Decision making is actually concentrated in the center. GST council, is there, but actually it is concentrated in the center. So, they are opposing there also, right? Ah. Okay. So, next. 5 years of GST. So, we have come 5 years today to GST and it includes 98% of products. 5 years ago today GST includes 98% of products and there are 5 rates. 5 rates under GST. Okay. Laffer curve. I told you that day. Is Phillips curve. So, this curve is also very, very important. What is Laffer curve, Andre? It is the curve between one is the tax revenue, tax revenue, the other is tax rate, tax rate. The curve between x axis only tax rate is there, y axis only tax revenue is there. The curve between tax rate and tax revenue is called as GST, I mean the Laffer curve. So, Laffer curve only, G, tax rate kadme idre, revenue kadme irute. Obviously, right? Tax rate kadme idre, the revenue that comes from tax is raised. Tax rate jasti akta akta, revenue increase agute. Yes? But it increases beyond a threshold. Then, tax rate again decreases. It is a ulta U. Why after a certain, see, this you understand, this you know. Tax rate kadme is tax revenue is less. But why after this point, tax after this point, the tax rate will start decreasing. See, when the tax rate becomes excess, people will stop paying taxes. Too much tax, who will pay? They will find alternative ways, tax evasion, tax avoiding. So, tax rate just again, tax revenue will less. So, it is always optimum to keep the tax rate at the minimum level or the medium level so that we get the highest tax revenue. This is what is said by Laffer curve. Next, you have the minimum alternate tax, the concept of minimum alternate tax. So, what is minimum alternate tax? Under minimum alternate tax, see, there are, there are certain companies, there are certain companies they take, I told you, tax expenditure only, there are lot of exemptions. Lot of exemptions are there. Lot of concessions are there. So, certain companies, what they, what they do, SEZ, SEZ only, there is lot of concessions. Concessions. NMIZ only, there are lot of concessions. 
export oriented units only agricultural processing units only certain companies what they do they take all these concessions and show zero book profit zero book profit and they have profit but they show that everything is exempted from tax so we are not paying any tax on the zero book profit they are going to show and they are companies that it is called zero tax companies zero tax companies so upon the zero tax companies whatever the tax that is imposed that is minimum so avaga zero tax we cannot definitely allow zero tax companies there should be some tax anta company which shows zero book profit upon which what the tax we are imposing that is minimum alternative tax minimum alternative tax so the last concept of the day is rajasva gyan sangam rajasva means tax in hindi it is mean tax gyan sangam andre it's a intellectual congregation tax authorities the intellectual congregation yar yar bartare idralli everybody ministry of finance will have representative rbi will have its representative amale idu direct tax uh, directorate of direct tax directorate of indirect tax everybody will come here in this sangam in this other uh, older uh, resort there they can conduct this they they conduct knowledge exchange intellectual exchange they, they are going to discuss various things how taxes can be impo, improved anta so this is the concept of rajasva gyan sangam tomorrow i will discuss the terms some terms i have to discuss before moving into banking banking sector in india yes okay so if you have any doubts please put it in the comment section or you can reach us to our uh, through our telegram channel right so please make good use of the classes and take maximum benefit out of it please take good care of your health let us meet tomorrow jai hind thank you